Thank you, Don. Thank you, Mark and Gee. Just about set to go. 41 games in, and the final Western Conference poll that the Ducks have not faced this season. Time for tonight's Keys to the Game is brought to you by Honda. For those for the Anaheim bench, we go. Our Ken Friend standing by with assistant coach Trent Yanni. Johnny, thank you. Uh, Trent Pecorini will not get the start for the Presby. Carter Hutton making only his fifth start of the season. How do you uh, take advantage of him here tonight? Well, they they got a strong forecheck, so we got to break out clean and then get the puck behind their D and get some pucks to the point. And I think if we do that, we'll be successful. Trent, appreciate it. You bet. All right, Johnny, back up to you. Thank you, Kent. Hutton has appeared against the Ducks once in his career. It was a loss to the Ducks in Nashville a season ago. He played 40 games last year. This is his third NHL season. And he looks down at the other end at a very experienced Frederick Anderson and just hit a second season. Anderson second in the league in games played. This would be his 34th tonight. He's also third in the league with 21 victories. And the referees for tonight's game are Francis Sharon and Dan O'Halloran. The linesmen are Keel Murchison and Brian Murphy. We're underway. The Ducks in their home blacks with white numbers and the Predators in their road whites with blue numbers. Corey Perry takes a swat at it as it comes to the near boards and he gets it deep. Hutton wanders out to play it along. A native of Thunder Bay, Ontario, now 29 years of age. Hutton watches as Perry tries to get it to the net. And it's deflected out of play by Mike Fisher. And Randy Bork draws back in on the left wing with Ryan Getzloff and Corey Perry to start this game tonight. Bruce Boudreau was saying the other day that he thought that Randy Bork's best two games that he's played in a Ducks uniform for the last two that he played. He said that he's a little bit reluctant to even take him out of the lineup. But they will like his skating ability. They want him to use that big body and get to the front of the net. You heard Trent Yanni touch on it. If the Preds are vulnerable because their defense is small, it is that area 10 feet in front of their own goal net that the Ducks would love to exploit tonight. Ole Jokin has given a rough ride as he tries to move it through the neutral zone, and it's forced back by Ben Lovejoy right on Hutton. who will play it there. Not yet a minute in at Honda Center. Glad to have you along on a Sunday night, halfway through the season and the homestand now for the Ducks, including this one here tonight. Seth Jones moves it ahead, and it's Gabriel Bork wearing 57 for the Predators, who moves it ahead, and now with a broken stick, Jokin will go to the bench for a change. When Bork was looking for a call. His stick got slashed. It did break. Mike Ribeiro comes up with it, trying to set up Craig Smith, and I think the shrapnel of what was left of Jokin and Stick may have gotten in the way of his one-time attempt. Ducks curl it back to center ice, and it's played across by Matthias Eckholm. Back to the near wing, and it's Philip Forsberg, the outstanding rookie who gets it to the Anaheim net first save of the game for Anderson is with a blocker. Well, Forsberg, uh, of course, after being named the MVP at the World Juniors, has really turned himself into a player that looks like he's going to be a force at the National Hockey League level. The great vision, a good first step, allows him to quickly get right in on top of people. At just 20 years of age still, Forsberg, who leads all rookies in goals, assists, points, power play assists, power play points, ice time, game-winning goals, on and on you go. Here's Silverberg on a seam pass through the middle. Hutton fights it off and covers up. And this is where the Predators can be vulnerable. That long stretch pass is so aggressive. When Clayton Stoner delivers a strike to Silverberg. He gets pretty good wood on that shot. No second opportunity. Forsberg was alone, which allows the Bulls to play a little bit more aggressively. Silverberg had four shots on goal here on Friday night in the 4-3 win over the St. Louis Blues, but he's without a point in his last eight coming into tonight on the right wing of Raquel along with Cogliano. And he steps into the circle to dig it free as Anaheim wins the draw. Ricard Raquel is one of the 61% of his draws the last two games. Up steps Bachman on the right boards to keep a puck in. Raquel got it in front. It goes off the skate of Silverberg right to Hutton who jabs it away. And the Preds will clear. Now Nashville is a team that really collapses in the defensive zone. And so the points will be open tonight for Anaheim. If you recover a puck, Nashville would rather take their chances on a long-range point shot than uh, having multiple players available lower down, closer to the net. Fisher with a long wrist shot and a little bit of traffic, but Anderson able to handle that with the glove. 39 saves for Freddie in the win over St. Louis on Friday. That equals his season high. You know, it was interesting watching that game. Uh, 
Freddie Anderson, the textbook modern day goaltender, if you will, playing the butterfly style and stopping almost every puck on his knees. And Marty Brodeur just scrambling around at the opposite end for the St. Louis Blues. Real difference in styles. And the former NHL great man said to me, the only thing that matters is whether you stop the puck or not. Fisher trying to get it to the net a second time, and this one was blocked by Getzloff. Fowler tracks it down on the far side, and he's being tracked there by Colin Wilson. Fowler and Lovejoy play catch, and Lovejoy puts it up on the glass and into the Nashville zone. Weber tried to reverse it, but the Ducks get it back. Good work by Bork. He tries to clear out for Perry, and then the return pass went right through Bork's legs. Randy Bork had a goal in those last two games Brian was mentioning before he was taken out of the lineup. Bork has been a healthy scratch each of the last two. He and his line mates will return to the Anaheim bench as the Ducks get it deep, and now Nashville starts back. Predators have not lost two consecutive games all season, and they won a wild one in overtime yesterday afternoon at Staples 7-6. A game in which they led 6-3 to three with two minutes and five seconds left. Kessler drops it for Valeski. Puts his shoulder down and can't quite get to the net. Off the side of the goal, Kessler gets it back. Lindholm floats one over top of the goal and off the back glass, Kessler got a stick on it. Ekholm is there. Ellis trying to dig it free. Pulled out by Romero, who just puts it right back into the fray for Eckholm. And, and you'll see that a lot from Nashville. You know, they put pucks into what they call safe areas, including you know, the corners in their own defensive zone. It has been a remarkable turn for this team as Smith's shot is saved, and the rebound trying to chip it over Anderson as he was cutting to the net. For Ellis, the defenseman, who was in deep. I, I think that caught a piece of the crossbar. Yeah, that was a nifty little play by Ellis. Boy, they, they've got some kind of hands. Gabriel Bork's bid is punched away by the blocker of Anderson and up the near wall. Thompson able to clear the zone, rocketed back in by Volchenkov, but we get an offside call, and then Volchenkov mixing it up with Jackman after the whistle. The Predators are small on the back end, but they are fast and talented, and they join the rush. And moments ago, we saw a good example of that. Watch the play by Ellis here. Kind of flips it up and just lobs it up into the air. It's off the top of the crossbar. And that takes uh, a lot of confidence in order to execute a play like that. And it almost worked for him. Ellis had a goal and an assist in that old Smythe Division game last night, or yesterday, I should say, at Staples Center. 13 goals in all. Four in the first, four in the second, four in the third. Including three by the Kings in the final two minutes and one second. And yet Nashville comes and away, Brian, with the two points. And when you're on the road, that was what Peter Laviolette said after the game. At the end of the day, it's two points, but it wasn't the way he wanted his team to play those last couple minutes. Yeah, I think because they're playing a non-divisional opponent, it's not quite as hurtful. You get the two points, and you don't much care that the L.A. Kings uh, picked up a point. I, I'm sure there were a lot of other folks in the Pacific Division that were more concerned with that finish. Seth Jones tees one up, blocked by Silverberg to the near side. Volchenkov got it through. Jones did not hold it in as it came back to the line. So once again offside, and the faceoff will come out to neutralize once again on American Honda. Sponsoring our three-star leaderboard this season. When a Duck player's name is the star of the game, we give them points. Five for the one star, three for the two star, and one for the three star. Bruce Boudreau was uh, commenting on the turnaround in Nashville, and he said, well, a number of factors playing into this. Seth Jones is a different-looking player with a year under his belt. Pecorino, of course, a top-three goaltender in the NHL, and, and that aggressive offensive style and the forecheck of the Predators, how quick they are, and uh, really caught the eye of the Anaheim coach. You mentioned Seth Jones, Brian. Still just 20 years of age. Jones was minus 23 last season. You talk about a turnaround, he's plus nine so far this year. Young defenseman that was taken fourth overall in the draft a year and a half ago. A native of Arlington, Texas, where his father played as a member of the Dallas Mavericks, Popeye Jones. 
Tatum following his father's footsteps. Instead, he grabbed a hockey stick. Here comes Perry. Gets locked with him into the Nashville zone. Return pass just misses the stick blade of Perry. A great pass again by Ryan Getzlaff. He, he has the ability to just hang on to that puck a split second longer than most so that Corey Perry can almost make that stick blade available. Wilson unable to draw the hooking call on Bolesky. He's got a stick under his arm, so play goes on, and here's Ellis carrying the mail into the Anaheim zone. A diminutive defenseman. Twice named the OHL Defenseman of the Year in his days of the Windsor Spitfires. Slides it over and Eckholm got it. Dug out of the corner by Kessler. Ellis covers the line and keeps it deep. Most moves it ahead. The spin move by Paul Mary frees the puck up and he moves it into the middle for Kessler. Couldn't get it over to Valeski and Forsberg on the back check. Philip Forsberg plus 23 on the season, sends it across. Ellis gets it deep, and the Preds go for changes. Lindholm moves it up the middle. Here's Kessler into the Nashville zone. Pulls it to the middle. Just missed. Comes off the end boards, and Hutton smothers. Not quite seven and a half in at Honda Center in the first period. Scoreless. We talk to people around the Predators and ask them why they're at the top of their division, and they'll point first to this gentleman, Pekka Rene. 25 wins and 33 starts this season, just the third time in the last 25 years that a goaltender has been able to do that. Chris Osgood, J.S. Shiger, the other two netminders to accomplish that feat. Big, imposing guy at six foot five inches tall, and uh, the only games that Carter Hutton has appeared in have been the second half of back-to-backs for the Predators. So they are getting full mileage out of a red-hot goaltender in Pecorino. Predators are 1-1-1 one, one, and one in the back end of the back-to-back -back games as Hutton seals the near post and denies Sammy Botnick. He puts it into the middle. Thompson's shot doesn't get through. And Jokinen clears the zone. Now you talk about differences, whether it be behind the bench or with the personnel for Nashville this season. Pecorine missed 51 games last season, coming off off-season hip surgery in which he incurred a bacterial infection and was limited to just 24 games a season ago. And he was so much of what the Predators did in years past. What has changed is the way the Preds play. And they don't rely quite as much on the defense and the goaltending as they have in years past. They can outscore you, as we showed you earlier in tonight's broadcast, based on that goal output. Here's Getzloff. And Hutton snaps it with the glove. What a great stop by Carter Hutton, who was sitting on that top corner uh, with the left hand. And he had Ryan Getzloff red all the way. Good outlet pass from Corey Perry. And Getzloff trying to go short side, top shelf. The aggressive goaltender Hutton well up in front of the goal tree, holding that hand high. Getzloff shoots it right in the mid. I don't know if he had to move this. Watch this. Nope. There it is right in the web. He might as well hold it up a little bit just to make sure everyone realized he just made a real good stick. Hutton played four years at UMass Lowell. In his collegiate days, part of Hockey East. And we're pointing out that the matchup that Peter Lavarlet is looking for. And he'll, he doesn't match his line so much. He matches defensemen. Wilson gets it to the net, sticked away by Anderson. The Getzloff chance came with no Shea Weber on the ice. And uh, that's the matchup that, of course, the head coach is really looking for tonight. Shea Weber will oppose Ryan Getzloff whenever he could negotiate that matchup. There's Weber, big, imposing guy, ultra powerful, 234 pounds, and uh, he can play in all different ways. Got the big shot, he will join the rush. In fact, Nashville's two best scoring chances in this game of all involved defensemen sneaking down off of the blue line. And so you will see Weber down there a lot more, I think, than we saw him in previous years. Weber, three times a finalist for the Norris Trophy in the last four years. Hazy, it's easy to dictate that matchup when you play Weber as much as Peter Laviolette plays him. I mean, it's nothing new under Laviolette. He plays over 26 minutes a game, fourth most of the National Hockey League. Ultimately, you're going to get the matchup whether you have to try to negotiate it or not. His defense partner, Roman Yossi, is right behind him, playing the fifth most ice time per game in the National Hockey League. So we'll see that pair out there a lot for the guys in white. Thompson seals one off at the line. Maroon got it in front. Jackman 
Right at the top of the blue paint. Big hit as over comes Boschman to get a big hip check into Gabriel for it. And Lindholm pulls it off the near wall in neutral ice. His pass across a little hot to handle, but Thompson able to get it deep. And Hunt wanders out to play it. Predators have been a tremendous home team this season. They're four over 500 away from Bridgestone Arena. Anaheim all time at Honda Center, 26 and 0 against the Predators. Palmer has the high glass on a nice little give and go with Kessler. Paleski uses the dasher to keep it deep. Paul Mary pinned to the boards by Volchenkov, and the loose puck squirts loose, and the Predators bring it back. And this line again uh, for the Ducks with some early scoring chances. And, uh, and the best line on the ice, no question from an Anaheim perspective, last game was the Kessler line with Pileski and Paul Mary on the wings. They, they continue to generate chances. They produced two of the Anaheim four goals on Friday as Yossi carries it into the Anaheim zone and drops it off. Yarn Croke spins it down low. The return feed for him tipped away as he came to the slot. Yeah, nice play by Kyle Palmieri there, who got back to the middle. As soon as you realize that the puck turns over, you're unsure what to do. Get into the middle of the ice. It's usually where the puck ends up. Getzloff finds Rennie Bork. He tried to drop it off for Perry, but it's swept away by Arcabello. And here's Eric Nystrom. Nystrom pasted in the corner as Lovejoy got him lined up nicely. Over comes Getzloff to try to knife it up the wall. He and Mike Fisher meet at the puck. Fisher trying to dig it loose, now throws it down low. Victor Stahlberg just back from Milwaukee in the American League in time for yesterday's game at Staples, playing in only his seventh game this season. Big free agent acquisition from the Blackhawks a couple of seasons ago. Fisher tries to drop it off high in the zone. Getzloff gets it ahead to Perry, but he's caught on the back check by Fisher. Getzloff holds the line, however, throws it across. And a good hustle play by Bork keeps it alive. Perry fires it in front. It went off of Eckholm, and Hutton will cover up. Shot 7-6 in favor of the Predators, but where it matters, there's no score. I was talking about Kyle Palmieri, Bolesky, and Kessler, and how well they've been playing offensively. They've also done a nice job in the defensive zone. And whenever there's a turnover, you go into full alert mode. What's Kyle Palmieri? Normally in this position, you only have to worry about the point man. But after a turnover, that's not the case. You take care of the middle of the ice. That's what Kyle Palmieri did. Got a stick into that passing lane and tipped it out of the defensive zone. So a good alert defensive play that time by Kyle Palmieri. With his return to the lineup and his goal on Friday, Palmieri seven points and plus six in his last seven games. No score with 8.15 to play in the opening frame at Honda Center. These teams will meet twice more, icing the call here against the Ducks. Tonight on Fox Sports Live, NFL Wild Card Weekend is over, and we'll break it down. With no LeBron James, can the Cavs take down Dallas? And has the hidden ball trick made its way to hockey? We'll explain tonight. Fox Sports Live is on Fox Sports 1 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. off to the left of Anderson. Mike Ribeiro, a duck killer throughout his 15-year career, takes the draw. 49 points in 47 career games against the Ducks for Ribeiro, who did most of his damage as a member of the Dallas Stars and the then Phoenix Coyotes, who bought him out in the offseason, so the Predators signed him to a one-year deal. Here's Bolesky. Puck that goes into the top corner for Matt Bolesky, but good things happen. Kessler in the neutral zone with the strip of Forsberg. Here's the Shayak ramps up the stick of Volchenkov right here. Watch it go off the shaft of the stick. Kind of a knuckleball at that point. And it pulls Carter Hutton up into the top corner. When you are hot, you're hot. Number 17 on the season. And Anaheim leads 1-0. Time of the goal, 12-15 of the opening period. And they may give an assist to Ryan Kessler. 
Kessler had two assists here on Friday against St. Louis. They do give Kessler the help for his nice strong slides it in wide of the Anaheim goal. The national team has not been deterred by much of anything this season. They have 12 wins already on the year when their opponent scores first. And Weber mishandling at the point. Now has to retreat along with Yossi. Weber mishandles again in the neutral zone. He can just angle it in, and so now the Ducks start back. Nashville goes for changes, and Lovejoy puts it on the boards and in. Weber stays out, lets it come through, and Stahlberg away to center. Victor Stahlberg into the Anaheim zone. Reaching for it as he goes below the goal line. Put it in front, and it's chopped just wide. A good play by Stahlberg to retrieve his own dump in. Fisher gets it to the net, and that's a souvenir off the stick of Anderson. Victor Stahlberg was sent down to Milwaukee in the American League on a conditioning assignment while down there, hurt his knee. So he's just healthy enough to get back up at the big club and start playing again. And uh, boy, he made a nice pass there to Mike Fisher on the doorstep. And uh, Fisher would probably like to have that one back. Face off will be to the right of Anderson. Ducks picked up their 13th home win of the season here on Friday. Sixth best home record in the league entering tonight. And Raquel with the faceoff win off the glass and out from Sandy Botton. Botton comes up with it, storms in. Find Stoner coming late. He missed the mark. Man, goaltender did not move in. Botton holds it in, but as he slides it across, nothing but Predators there. And here's Stahlberg again with speed. Poked off his stick by Botton as he tried to get to the middle. And he bumps Sandy into the corner boards. Raquel drops down to help out. He's able to move it behind the goal. Botton has it there. Two assists for Sammy in the win on Friday as he stretches it all the way to Raquel at center red. Hard around and in. Both teams finishing changes, and Ryan Ellis starts back. Matias Ekholm had a goal against the Kings last night. He can't get it past the blue line. Now Ribeiro brings it back. Forsberg looking for the pass. Doesn't get it. Now it's tipped in by Smith. Kessler turns it back. Or excuse me. It's Lindholm who moves it up the wall, and now he's able to just chip it ahead. Kessler couldn't get to it. Valeski couldn't move it the other way. Pass a little too hot to handle into the middle of the ice. Intended for Smith, and now Kessler clears. Hard around and in. Balchenkov sends it. Bruce Boudreau has been able to get the matchups that he wants here. He wants Brian Kessler's line to be on the ice whenever Ribeiro is out there for the Predators. And that matchup, of course, it led to the only goal of this game. Kessler trying to protect the puck through the middle, but Arcabello took it away from him. Former standout at Yale, who just came over from the Edmonton Oilers a week ago. Arcabello made the Predators debut yesterday and scored a goal in the win over the Kings. Now he digs it out and pitches it back to center ice. Fowler thinks better of the blind reversal up the wall, so he takes it behind the goal. Watched by Yarncroke, he circles once more. Jackman gets the feed on the right side and flips it in. Maroon crashing in after it. Yossi used his body to keep Maroon at bay, but now Thompson trying to get it to the net. Off a skate, it comes out. Lovejoy, hard around and in, and Maroon goes after it. Bumping there with Volchenkov. Volchenkov, another player who was bought out in the offseason last year. The Devils buying him out of his deal, so Nashville took a chance on the veteran. Gostab there with an opportunity to step into Sammy Botnin at the blue line. Pretty big, heavy man, uh, Paul Gostab. And he won't turn away from too many chances to do that either. Gostab, known for his face-off prowess and his physical play. Nice pass to Bork through the seam into the Nashville zone. His wrist shot is held by Hutton. And we'll step aside with three and a half to go in the first. The game's first goal belongs to the Ducks and Matt Valeski. Reached the halfway point of the season, and it does appear that some lines are being solidified uh, in this people's roster.
Boston. Kyle Palmieri has come back from a couple of different injuries. And uh, boy, since his latest return, he and Ryan Kessler and Matt Molesky have been starting to light teams up offensively. And it's, it's sure good to see uh, guys with that developing, emerging chemistry. Well, they produced three of the last five Anaheim goals. It's a Predators team that has put five or more goals on an opponent on five separate occasions already this season. They got down early yesterday, 1-0 to the Kings before they built a 5-1 cushion. Silverberg's long wrist shot punched away by the blocker of Hutton to the line. Lindholm gets it through, and that one's absorbed by the Nashville Netmines. Good quick counterattack by the Ducks. You can see what Cogliano was trying to do there. He was just trying to, excuse me, Silverberg snap it and see if the goaltender Hutton might show some rust and put the rebound in a bad spot. See that Cogliano had good speed away from the play. That's what uh, Silverberg probably just whispered in his ear. I was trying to get the puck to you off of the goaltender. Did not work that time. Just a shade under three to go in the opening period. Gets Lop out to take the draw, and as he wins it, he is going to be tossed from the circle. Perry will step in to take it instead. Mike Fisher allowed to stay. Better than a 51% faceoff man. Fisher wins it. Fisher missed 21 games to begin the season for the Predators with a ruptured Achilles that required surgery. He had surgery back in July, but he has come back with a vengeance. Nine points in his last 10 games. Wilson trying to get it over. To Fisher in the high slot, but that's deflected away. Perry leaves it for Fowler with a full head of steam into the Nashville zone. Fowler got it to the net. Hutton steers it away. Lovejoy steps up, hope to the point, covered by Getzlop. Off the post! May have been tipped by Bork in front as Hutton was trying to get a glove on. Lovejoy has it again. Getzlop draws three defenders. Back to Lovejoy. One-timer saved through the screen of Bork and covered by Carter Hutton. Now, I don't know if the touch by Rennie Bork would have counted. I mean, that puck was high. And quite likely was above the height of the crossbar. Here it comes. There's Bork in front. Getzloff just kind of lobbed it there. Oh, yeah, that one was coming back if it goes into that. Puck knocked down with a high stick. And Carter Hutton probably said to the referee, that would not have counted, right? So the referee said, no harm, no foul. Now, people ask me sometimes if it... If it deflects, knocked down with a high stick, hits the crossbar, then hits the goaltender, is it back in play? It's not back in play until another member other than the goaltender from the defensive team actually touches the puck. And people uh, often get confused as well. If it goes off the high stick, hits the goalie, and then goes in. Is it a good goal? The answer is no. Kessler drops it off for Paul Mary. Finally picked up by Lindholm, who tees it up. That's blocked. Comes back to him. He drops it off. Kessler finds it. Through traffic, he just missed. And it's swatted away off the end board. Still without a stick is Greg Smith, who chases it to the neutral zone. Lindholm, nifty play back across the line. Got it to Paul Mary and unable to connect with Bolesky. And I mean, is really looking sharp, John. Moving the puck. That was an excellent read by Hampus Lindholm. The Predators are hanging in. They've been back on their heels for most of this period. They had the first two scoring chances, but from that point on, it has pretty much been all ducks. In fact, Anaheim has 10 of the game's last 12 shots on goal. Puck out of play with just over a minute to go here in the opening period. Faceoff's going to stay in the Anaheim zone. You know, we talk so much about Matt Molesky and what he's done from a goal-scoring perspective. With the goal tonight, he's now plus 13 in his last 18 games and plus 16 on the season. Another team-leading total for Molesky. I think at the beginning of the year, if you just said, what will Matt Molesky lead the team in halfway through the season? You might have said hits. He led the team in hits a few years ago, but I don't think you would have said goals, plus minus, and game-winning goals, but that is the case. No full credit to Matt. I mentioned this before, but 
back home to his hometown of Barrie, Ontario, during the offseason. Worked with a shooting coach by the name of Brad Trottier. And I would imagine that he's getting a number of phone calls yeah. based on the success that Matt has had this year. Matt Pulaski's been good advertising. Yarn Croak wins the draw. And Seth Jones muscled off the puck by Maroon. Nice play by Pat, but as he backhands it off the glass, it goes the length of the ice. They wave the icing as Nystrom's back to get it. And he turns it over. Here's Botnick, the recipient of that break. Slides it over for Stoner, whose wrist shot did not get deflected. And Hutton made the save, but he didn't know where the rebound was. See, this is where the Ducks feel that they can really dominate the Predators. Plays down low. When they get cycling, and they're able to get to rebounds in front of the goaltender. And that's how that's how the L.A. Kings got a point out of that game last night. They just powered their way to the front of the net. The Predators look vulnerable. They're not big on the back end. They're fast. But, the boy, if, if you start getting pucks to the front of the crease area, you can sometimes win those battles in the, the most opportune of all areas. Good, great period for Anaheim. Uh, they easily matched the pace in the opening 20 minutes. The Nashville Predators, they had uh, eight of the final nine scoring chances in the period. And I, I thought Carter Hutton actually had a pretty good period because the Ducks had a number of good rebound chances against him. So for now, big one, fast nothing. After 20 minutes of play, we go down to Mark Rogandino and Guy Bear. Anaheim Ducks hockey is brought to you by Big Bear Mountain Resorts. Real snow. Real close, real deal. And by Jack in the Box, the Chipotle Chicken Club combo is back at Jack in the Box for a limited time. The National Predators have scored 32 goals in their last seven games. That's better than four and a half goals a game coming into this one here tonight at Honda Center. But the Ducks keep them off the scoreboard in the opening period and have a one nothing lead as we get set to begin the second period of play. Let's go down to the Anaheim bench. Our Kent French standing by with assistant coach Brad Lauer. Yeah, thank you, Johnny. Brad, the Preds are a very quick team, but you guys are the bigger team. How do you continue to use your size to the advantage moving forward? Well, I mean, I think a lot of it is uh, puck protect. Obviously, you, you said they're a very quick team. They're a quick team on transition. So, again, turnovers, we got to limit those at the blue line, get pucks in, and like I said, use our size, finish our checks, and then grind them out down low. Brad, appreciate it. Thanks. Johnny, back to you. Thank you, Kent. This is the first time the Ducks have seen the new look Predators, if you will, under head coach Peter Laviolette. They'll play again a month from tomorrow in Nashville and then finish the season series on March the 15th back here at Honda Center. Well, Peter Laviolette, it's been interesting. He won a Stanley Cup when he was with the Carolina Hurricanes. He had a smaller, fast team with the Hurricanes. When we went to the Philadelphia Flyers. They were not a fast team, and they were certainly, they weren't very fast on the back end. And sometimes, I, I think, uh, for a coach like Laviolette, who has a system that he's used in all three cities, as much as anything, you got to have personnel that kind of matches the way that you want to play the game. This, this personnel certainly matches that style of game. Ducks will begin the second period with the Getzloff line out. That includes Bork and Corey Perry. Lovejoy and Fowler defensively. They'll match up against the Mike Fisher line. And as Colin Wilson on the left. And Victor Stahlberg on the right. Preds win the draw, get it in, and Weber knocks down a clearing attempt. Then gets the handle a second time and pitches it in on the back end. But Nashville needs to touch up and get on side. So time and space for Lovejoy and Fowler. Gets off into the middle off the stick of Perry. And steered back quickly by Weber. An area pass off the boards that doesn't connect with Fisher and ends up being icy. Well, I was talking with Corey Perry earlier today and asking him how he's feeling. He's had a couple of games under his belt since he has returned from that lower body injury. And he says, I can feel it coming, but sometimes the, the hands just aren't where they used to be to the point they were part of the injury. And John, you and I were talking before the game. It seems a long time ago that Corey Perry was named the player of the month for the entire National Hockey League in October. Two games back for Perry. He's averaged less than 17 minutes a game. And he has four shots on goal in that span. Boy, Kessler giving a pretty good shot from behind as he was in behind the Nashville goal. Kept in at the line. Nice play by Bolesky. And just missing on the tip was Palmieri. 
Valeski gets it back as Palmieri was able to track it down. Now up the boards, Boschman, the point covered by Palmieri. That is tipped right on, and Hutton holds on. Good, good play, good decision by Kyle Palmieri to just throw it towards the net. Ryan Kessler was in the vicinity. Kessler is in the corner. Watch what he does. Watch him get the stick on the ice. See a little, little slash of the stick on the ice. That's an indication as we've come to see with Ryan Kessler that he wants the puck. Whenever he starts snapping that stick on the ice, it's, that's the give it to me signal to one of his teammates. Kessler, the shots on goal leader for the Ducks this season. Incidentally, they have taken away the assist to Ryan Kessler on the Bolesky goal. The only goal of the game in the first period will now be an unassisted goal for Matt Bolesky, his 17th of the year. And that's the difference in the hockey game to this point. It came at 12-15 of the opening period. 1-0 Anaheim, just over a minute now into the second period. Mike Rivero out. Assist leader for the Predators this season to take the draw. You consider after the buyout in Phoenix, Rivera was relatively inexpensive at a million dollars a year coming over, and he has delivered. All I've got to look at is the plus 15 for me with Mike Rivera. Uh, plus 15 is uh, off to a good start with uh, this Nashville team. It seems to be a good fit. His career high, plus 21, a few years back with the Dallas Stars. Ekholm, the defenseman, pulls up in the corner after skating all the way around the zone, and the rebound came to Forsberg, but he couldn't get it on net. Ekholm has it again, winds and fires, scores! Off the post and in! Well, this may have been redirected. Well, kind of an interesting play up top, where the Predators pass it across. I believe it was Ellis that let it go all the way through to Ekholm. Watch this puck as it comes up near the blue line. There's Ribeiro, and it's the fake shot. Ellis lets it go all the way through, and Ekholm shoots it. And I don't know if that puck touches anything. But it goes Smith underneath the left pad of Frederick Anderson. No, I, I think Anderson just kind of whiffs on that shot from the boards by Ekholm. So it'll be second goal in as many games for Matthias Ekholm, his third of the season, and we are all square. Jones throws it into the Anaheim zone, and then Volchenkov sends Jackman into the Anaheim bench. Maroon gets to it down low, turns off of Bork and got it to the line. Lovejoy's shot tipped on the way, ends up in the corner as Jackman ends up on the floor of Honda Center. Yeah, and that's how you deal with the collapsing down low. That little bank pass off of the board, back to the point, man, and then you get punched to the front. Thompson steps in front. Hutton denies that. And back comes Gabriel Bork the other way. On left wing, tries to center off the skate of Lovejoy and careful to play it with the Preds. Well, I think he had too many men on the ice, but they let play go on anyway. I was about to say, it wasn't all that careful. No, not careful enough, but no call. Play on. Fowler reverses it. Weber activates, fires it in front, a little behind Nystrom. And, and there's that play where, where Weber comes all the way down from the point. Creates a chance. Getzloff storms the other way, drops it to Rennie Bork, tipped in by Corey Perry! So the Ducks come right back, and this is a shot pass from Rennie Bork and the long arms of Corey Perry. He's just going to lay the stick blade down. Look at Perry in the middle, just lays the blade down, and Bork snaps it. It's off the bleed between the wickets, and the Ducks jump back in the lead. Boy, what, what a great response there from the big line from Anaheim. It got to feel good for Corey Perry, his first since returning to the lineup from that lower body injury. So his third game, and he's back on the board. 15th goal of the season. It comes just a minute 14 after the goal by Eckholm, and Anaheim's back on top 2-1. to one. Victor Stahlberg centers, and Boschman stayed home to intercept that. Moves it quickly. And an area pass ahead for Cogliano. Doesn't connect from Silverberg, but he tracks it to the corner. Ricard Raquel jumps in as he moves it to the middle. Ryan Ellis pounces on it. Ellis full head of steam into the Anaheim zone. Can't make a pass, though, as he was blocked. And now we got a whistle. I think the Ducks are going to be called for too many men here, John. 
Yeah, Raquel hasn't made his way back to the bench yet. Not sure what the call is. Don't know if they called an offside on the rush. Bruce Boudreaux doesn't seem to uh, be I, I, clear. I, I think he's quite fine with him not calling a too many men on the ice pin. We saw Nashville get away with one. The Ducks just got away with one right there as well. Lindholm ahead to Valeski, who stabs it ahead to the Nashville blue line. Transition for the Preds. Ribeiro into the middle of the ice. Stops, curls it between the circles, and that's broken up by Kessler. Paul Mary throws it back across. And Nashville unable to get it deep. Eckholm just winds and hard around. It'll hit the back of the Anaheim goal. An exchange of slashes between Francois Boschman and Mike Ribeiro. The referee elects to again look the other way a little bit. Up the left side, Arcabello. He gets to the corner as Nystrom does the work down low. Back to the line. Seth Jones slides it over Volchenkov. One times it off the boards, and that was deflected just wide. Nystrom in front got a stick on it. Ducks force it back, and Jones turns and heads up ice with it. His pass broken up, and Stoner just swoops it. You can see how quickly the Anaheim defenders are trying to move the puck. Oh, great pass. Votman finds Perry behind the defense, and he missed the net. Boy, Votman with that 120-foot pass, and alone at the blue line was Perry, but he was a little flat-footed. He had to try to rev it up. Seth Jones did a good job coming back. Now it's Getzloff. One timer from Botnan is blocked. And it comes all the way back to Ole Jokinen. Weber will join him. Jokinen saucers it across, tipped away by Botnan on the back check, and then knocked out of midair by Weber. It's kind of fun. End to end, they go, and Sammy Botnan is gassed as he goes back to the bench. He was in on two offensive rushes, and then he had to scoot back twice to try and get back into the play as the Preds counterattack. Sammy was all the way to the right wing dot with the stick cocked and ready to fire that one timer. When it got blocked and went past him, he had to turn on the Jets. Back come the Ducks. Lovejoy. Penalty coming up to the Predators as Hutton makes the save and the Predators touch up. Going to be a tripping penalty here against Nashville. And I believe it's going to be Mike Fisher that gets the gate on this one. Keep an eye on the left side of your screen, and you're going to see Fisher just kind of get the stick into the feet of Andrew Cogliano, and it pulls him down. Here was that great pass by Sammy Botnan. Corey Perry knows he's being pressured from behind. I think at the end of that, Seth Jones really impacted the shot by Corey Perry, but first power play of the game. The Predators don't give you too many power play chances. Here's one for Anaheim. Fisher's a big part of their kill, whether it's winning faceoffs or blocking shots. He's the one who sits. Ducks broke their power play drought in the win against St. Louis here on Friday. Scoring on their first power play of that game. Well, here's a new look for the Ducks. A different power play unit here for Bruce Boudreaux. Normally we're seeing Kessler out there along with Getzloff and Perry. But uh, Boudreaux kind of spreading his assets around here with the extra man. And Kessler with Paul Mary and Raquel. Boschma. And Lindholm at the points. Campus back to Francois with a one-time blast, and that's tipped to the corner as Ellis was sent sprawling. Kessler awkwardly into the boards. Eckholm reverses it away, and Ryan Ellis reaches it and lobs it back to center ice. Yeah, but not far enough for the Preds to get a complete change on the penalty kill. Now Lindholm gives it away. Boy, Ellis took a real good bump from Ryan Kessler there. went over the glass and out of play with still 58 seconds left. Here was, the man advantage. Here's the blast from Boschman from the point. See the Ducks is a Paul Mary in front of the net. He's trying to leap out of the way of that hip-high shot by Francois Boschman. 
So now the first power play unit with Getzloff, Perry, Bolesky, Botnan, and Fowler comes out. Everybody looking up at the scoreboard. Not exactly sure what the conversation between Peter Laviolette and Brian Murphy is right now. I think Laviolette disputing where the faceoff should be. But Getzloff controls in the Nashville zone. Fowler gets it to him. Quick puck movement to Bot and high slot. Pileski back to Fowler and misfires. And that enables Arcabello to clear. Yeah, too bad. Uh, good puck movement. Getzloff snapped it across. They used the middle of the ice well. And unfortunately for Cam Fowler, he just picked his head up and had that puck just kind of roll on him a little bit. And Hutton can't get a handle on it off the stanchions and a puck recovered by the Ducks. Off Getzloff's stick, he hustles to get it and uses the boards to swing it back around. Fowler put it behind the net while Chinkoff sniffed that out and he bounces it around the dasher and all the way down. Yeah, you can see the power play, you know, trying to move the puck away from pressure, rimming around the boards, but you know, the difficulty is if, if the puck doesn't sit flat for you. Perry angles it ahead to Getzloff. It goes behind his back, but then can't get enough on the backhand pass. So Fisher out of the box. And the Predators full strength. Jokinen shouldered as he gains the blue line. And then coming in late, it's Fisher who got the shot on net. Anaheim did not author a shot on goal during that power play opportunity. Sand wedged the length of the ice by Getzloff, timed by Silverberg, who's onside. That was the alley-oop, to say the least. Stoner plays it back. He's out there with Lovejoy right now. Now Weber and Roman Yossi play catch in the Nashville zone. 11.40 to go second period. The Ducks on top, 2-1. to one. Across the line, Jokinen trying to get it into the middle, and then he pursues all the way to the near side. Fisher trying to center. Couldn't connect with Stahlberg. Now he cycles it back for Colin Wilson. Wilson. Knocked to his knees by Lovejoy. He returns the favor, and from his knees, Lovejoy plays it along the dasher. It's a good battle with uh, Ben Lovejoy down low. Boudreau often talks about Lovejoy and his ability to defend with that very active stick. There it is again. Not in there on Wilson. Wilson out of the corner, trying to bring it to the front of the net. He's met by Stoner, who deflects it out of play. Nearly halfway through the hockey game, the teams trade goals. Just 74 seconds apart, and it's this one from Corey Perry that has put the Ducks back on top, 2-1. Limited edition Temu Solani merchandise soon to be available at the Ducks team store, powered by Reebok. Come to Honda Center beginning January 8th and see the exclusive new items released. For more information, AnaheimDucks.com slash forever. Temu is the location on the interweb. Of course, one week from tonight, the Ducks will retire the number eight of the great Tamu Solani and a lot of anticipation around these parts about that night. The ceremony, which will begin at 4.30 for a 6 o'clock game. It's Paul Mary gloving one down, and his bid is chopped out of play by Weber. i got to give me one of those Solani toothpicks. A lot of very cool Solani merchandise in the team store these days, but I'm kind of fond of that Solani tooth. It's been cold in these parts, you although, them. <laughs> although we shouldn't complain too much about our weather in Southern California, but temperatures in the 30s. The blood things, John. Yeah. A few nights ago, we were near freezing in certain parts. We had snow in Marietta, Temecula region, just a few days ago. Real hockey weather in SoCal. Pat Maroon working in the corner, and now pursuing is Thompson. He gets bumped as he goes to the other corner with it. Just about to the halfway mark of the hockey game. The Ducks have led 1-0 and 2-1, and that's where we stand right now. Maroon able to dig it free. Got it to the front of the net. Back to Lindholm. Oh, and I don't know if Hutton saw it, but he saved it. Yeah, a real nice shift there and some good work down low with Maroon and Jackman. Lindholm has it again. Dancing on the blue line with it. Thompson lets it go down low. Maroon bumped by Yossi. And the loose puck picked up by Gabriel Bork, who hoists it to center. Gloved down by Lindholm. Oh, wow, did he take a hit from Weber. He got crushed. Along the near side. And Weber still on top of Lindholm. And Mampus 
checking to make sure he's got all the parts as he gets back up. Hands didn't like it. Tampa stays out, gets a tip on the pass. And then Perry finally just hacks it into the Nashville zone. You know, there was a time early in Hampus Lindholm's career, he wasn't used to all the physical play. He would admire his passes, and he would get hit a lot more often. Uh, he's, he's really improved in that regard. But, uh, boy, I think he's going to remember that hit by Shea Weber. And yeah, Weber trucked him along the near side boards. And now, finally, the Predators break out, but can't keep the handle in the neutral zone. Weber angles it in. And gets off along the far wall, slides it over. Cam Fowler with a pass that hops the stick of Perry. Arcabella moves it back. Transition for the Preds as Ribeiro angles it in, but it's hoisted back by the backhand of Getzloff. Benny Bork kicks it up. Bork and Getzloff drew the assists on a go-ahead goal earlier this period by Corey Perry. Bork puts this one in the netting above the high glass, so we'll step aside halfway through. Just over eight minutes to play here in the second period with Corey Perry, who's 15th goal of the year. Give the Ducks a 2-1 lead. Corey, how did that play develop? Oh, it was a great play by Getze, uh, you know, down to Borky. And I was just yelling for, for it to go to the net, and I had to get a stick on it. I appreciate it. All right, thanks. All right, Johnny, back to you. Thank you, Kent. Moments ago, Shea Weber showing the physical side of his game to one Hampus Lindholm. Yep, yeah, and 235-pound uh, Shea Weber. Pretty good bicep strength there by Hampus as he lifts up the left leg of Shea Weber. He's an all-purpose defenseman, Weber, and he's going to be in the hunt once again this season. With the Predators having such a great year, well, this might be the year that he wins his first Norris Trophy guy. And Brian, might part of that be that he doesn't have to carry quite as large an offensive load? I mean, he was a leading scorer for the entire team last year. You don't yep. see that very often from a defenseman in the National Hockey League. He's twice scored 20 goals and had over 50 points in a season as he did last year. But maybe by taking a little bit of that offensive load off of him, it has enabled him to play a more important role with this hockey team. He's still their leading scoring defenseman. We've often talked about that 2003 draft being perhaps the greatest draft in NHL history. That's when Getzloff and Perry both went in uh, the first round to the Ducks. Shea Weber was actually a second round pick of the Nashville Predators. And uh, it's an awfully darn good second round pick. When you talk about perhaps less of a load offensively, Weber had a game a couple of years ago against the Ducks where he had 12 shots on goal. He's only attempted three shots in this entire game. Two have missed the net and one was blocked, so not having nearly the impact. As Anderson punches one away with Nystrom falling behind him in his goal crease. player without a stick that lays in the corner and Weber's bid here is deflected out of play so he's yet to get one to the net. And it was actually Clayton Stoner who had lost his stick in the corner and it was Stoner that came out and made that block on the Weber bid from the blue line. A little bit of street hockey goalie he plays and he manages to get a touch on that puck. The Stoner a guy just so quietly effective for the Ducks you, you look at the stat sheet and you see that he's got one assist and he's an even player, and I think he's been just terrific. I think he has given you know, that kind of bite back on the blue line that the Ducks really needed from him. Wilson sweeps one over top of the Anaheim goal. Arcabello, excuse me, it's Gostad who goes and gets it on the far boards. Fisher hacks it along. Stalberg goes to the front of the net. Wilson trying to bring it in front. Throws it right in to the skates of Stahlberg and a penalty coming up to the Ducks. As Stahlberg was able to find it and take the shot, he was engaged with Francois Boschma, who's going to get the gate, I believe. Well, Stahlberg's a big guy, and uh, he gets positioned down in front of that. Just keep an eye on the front of the net. You see Boschma trying to push him out. Stahlberg gets to the loose puck, and uh, I think Boschma was given that penalty after Goaltender Anderson makes the save, and Solberg was a little bit off balance when uh, Boschman made contact with the stick. And that's why he goes down so easily. So he draws the call. The Preds, who have had a real issue with their power play, currently ranked 28 in the NHL. 
However, they have five power play goals in their last four games. Holding the stick is the penalty. Holding the stick. For 31% in that span. Anaheim penalty kill, 13 of 15 in their last four games. One of the big problems for Bruce Boudreaux is that his team has been shorthanded so much. Loose puck pops straight up in the air as Smith got a redirect on it. He finds it again. Ellis hammers one block by Lovejoy. Lovejoy stick broken, yeah. Ellis had a power play goal last night at Staples Center. He's got it again and throws it over to Seth Jones. A pair of right-hand shot defensemen out right now for Peter Laviolette's power play unit. Ellis and Jones. Jones now hands it off. Mike Ribeiro works the half wall. He's the setup man into the middle and Smith doesn't get much on it but the backhand clear doesn't come out as Lovejoy is using Getzloff's stick. And at least it's a right hand stick as Seth Jones scores! Well, that was deflected on the way and it knuckled its way to the back of the net. Yeah, tough break for the Ducks. You know, a lot of times it's, it's when you break a stick when you're killing a penalty. In the second period, it, it's hard. Ducks had one opportunity to clear, and Lovejoy using Getzloff's stick could not hoist it out of harm's way. This looked like that deflected off a couple of people before it made its way into the net. High screen, I think it touches Kessler, then it touches Lovejoy, and then it's in behind the goaltender, Anderson. Look at all the bodies in front. There's one touch, there's two touches. Boy, you talk about bad luck. That is bad luck on the goal by Seth Jones. I think it maybe next time when Getzloff offers his stick to Ben Lovejoy, he'll just say, no thanks. So for the second time tonight, tied at two. The last tie lasted just That's over a minute goal. before Anaheim regained the lead. Stoner behind the goal, moves it along. And Maroon able to finally battle it past Weber, who had pinched up the wall. So for Seth Jones, his first power play goal of the year, his second goal of the season, and we're tied at two. Weber's pass broken up, and Botman will go get it. Jokinen thinks better of going after it. He'll go for a change. Sammy stretches it long up the left side for Maroon. He misfires, but rolled it near the side of the net. Hutton got a stick on that. Keeps the puck alive long enough to poke it to the corner. He was getting roughed up by Ryan Ellis. Lindholm denies entry at the line, and Ellis trailing the play, trying to weave and wait for the mates to get onside. Self-pass off the boards, broken up by Kessler. And a nice pass into the middle, kicked up by Paul Mary to Bolesky. Bolesky cuts to the middle, goes around the defender, kicks it into the crease, and then he gets deposited into the Nashville net. All right, he got worked over. A little bit of hooking going on, but there's no call on the play. And you know, Matt Bolesky feels about that. Yeah, I think Matt Bolesky may have had a very valid beef as we look at him attack the net. Watch Ekholm with the chop right there. And no call. In comes Ellis on the hands. Actually knocks the bottom hand of Matt Bolesky right off the stick as he was about to take a shot. Uh, either one of those incidences could have been ruled a slap. They were not. We continue to play at full strength. Tied at two as Anaheim battles for the puck along the end boards. Roman Yossi trying to protect his ready for And behind the net looking for Perry, it eludes him. And Perry now is going to be called for the trip. He took a Nashville player down along the near boards. Was that Gostad or was it Weber that he tripped up? Shea Weber, who had got a half step on Corey Perry, and Corey Perry got caught on the wrong side of Shea Weber. He's going to reach. And when he reaches, he just takes the skates right out from under him. So the Predators score on their previous power play. And down into Anaheim territory for their second power play chance of this game. Moments ago, Perry had gone down the tunnel. Looked as if he was shaken up a bit, but good to see him back out there. Now he'll have to watch as the Preds have their second man advantage of the night. Forsberg serves it over. Weber shot. He's up rattling the high glass. Recovered. 
by the Predators. Yossi walks it to the middle. Weber, one-timer. Turned away by Anderson, and the rebound picked up by Kessler. And he'll lob it cross ice back into the Nashville zone. Yossi stretches it as the Preds go for changes, and then Weber misses Jokin, and this is icing. Well, one thing that Nashville is trying to do on this power play is to really establish the presence in front of Frederick Anderson. Shea Weber's got the big shot, but look at how hard Mike Fisher battles with Sammy Botman to try and get into the eyes, or in front of the eyes of Frederick Anderson. That's a good job by Sammy Botman there, boxing out, preventing Fisher from getting into that shooting lane. Fisher and Forsberg share the team lead. Three power play goals each. Entering tonight, a minute 20 to go in Perry's minor penalty. 3.45 to go second period. Tied at two, only opening. Gets it deep, pursues it, but Lindholm with a strikeout for Cogliano. And he couldn't handle it cleanly, so he'll just ice it. Perry's penalty under a minute now. Ribeiro takes the feet up the left side. Drops it back, Yossi across for Jones. Jones who has the Nashville power play goal, ridden off the puck in the corner by Lindholm. Ribeiro recovers far side. Ryan Ellis back to Ribeiro as he curls into the middle. Passes it down low, and Smith turned away. But in close by Anderson. Getzloff pokes it to the corner, and then got it as far as the line, but Jones hinges over to keep it in. Oh, that's a good play by Jones, he's using his body there. Ellis, that was tipped, rebound, score! Craig Smith, and Nashville has their first lead. Two for two on the power play are the Predators, and they have come all the way back to take the lead in this hockey game. Watch this play right here by Seth Jones. How he protects this puck on the backhand side. See him stick out the right leg. He keeps it alive. Point shot, tip, rebound. And Smith has got all kinds of time. Well, Smith with the original tip that created the issue for Freddie Anderson. But a, a good, alert, smart point shot by Ellis. And the Predators, boy, that, that power play for the 28th power does not look like the 28th ranked power play, that's for sure. Well, they're now seven of their last 18. Ryan, we get a whistle here right off the faceoff, and I think we got penalties. I think it's going to be a penalty. penalty. Yeah, Tim Jackman's going to go. You see Gostad. I think it was a high sticking penalty against Tim Jackman, so just like that, boy, Nashville back on the power play. They have done some damage tonight. Let's see if we can pick it up. Here comes Jackman. Oh boy, it's a little bit of a late hit on the chin of Gostad. And he'll take the hit for Tim Jackman to get the elbowing penalty, that's for sure. So a very key juncture in the hockey game. 2.37 to play second period. Nashville with their first lead now up 3-2. Because of a pair of power play goals here in the second. And as Anaheim wins the draw, it is ripped the length of the ice by Ben Lovejoy. Oh, Hutton, a little precarious the way he was playing the puck. Thompson comes in with Silverberg. Jokinen, pestered by Silverberg, forced to turn back. Weber joins the rush. Dropped off for Forsberg by Fisher. And now Weber will just tee it up, and that's off the stick of Cogliano and out of play. <laughs> Cogliano, he reaches. When, when Shea Weber is winding up the blast, it's amazing how sometimes the seas will part and the shooting lane materializes. He has got just a howitzer, and it's a heavy shot, too. The Ducks, of course, we've, we've talked about the foot protection that every single player in the lineup now wears on top of their skates, a plastic sheath, and affords a, a little bit of extra protection against a guy like Weber. Jones lays it off for Rivera, who won the draw. Mike Rivera will trade places. Well, that was a little bit of a pick on Botman. As he traded places with Colin Wilson, and now Kessler broke up the pass intended for Wilson. Ellis is on it, circles back. Ryan Ellis. 
Gave it to Forsberg, who returned the favor, and then Smith nearly lost it. And keeps it alive from the corner. Colin Wilson into the middle. Smith and Ribeiro. Jones is open. Very careful to keep possession of the Predators on this power play that has now just 40 seconds left. Ellis' one-timer gobbled up by Anderson. And Stoller mixing it up in front. With Craig Smith and Colin Wilson. Cagliano joined the fray as well. Well defended by the Ducks. A good patient penalty killing here. They'll give up the one-timer from that area on the ice. It's not all that dangerous. Clayton Stoner, a little pushing and shoving. It's going to be Botnick. Gets involved. And, uh, boy, I like the way Kester comes in here. Excuse me, Cagliano. I like the treatment that Wilson was giving to this much smaller Botnick. Still 40 seconds left in the penalty to Jackman. A minute 17 to go in the period. And Thompson steps in to oppose Jokin and finally controlling the draw and careful to steer it all the way back is Hampus Winhold. Hutton forced to play it to Yossi. Roman Yossi had the game in overtime yesterday at Staples Center. Headmans to Jokinen. Now under a minute to go in the period. Forsberg gives it back to Ole Jokinen into the line. Yossi looks over and sees Shea Weber. Penalty coming up to the Ducks. And as it's thrown to the net, the Predators will let Anaheim touch up. Four seconds still left in the penalty to Jackman. Uh, I think this is the goaltender, Frederick Anderson. He did not have his stick. Perhaps knocked out of his hand. Uh, didn't see what was going on, but it's... It's a roughing penalty levied against him. Uh, it has to be served by one of the Anaheim players on the ice. Watch what happens with Anderson. He gets a stick in the face. He gives a little bit of a shot to... Oh, boy. Yeah, you're going to get a penalty every time. I used to say this to uh, J.S. Shiger. If, if you're going to do it... <laughs> I know where this is going. Well, you might as well get your money's worth because then the player retaliates. And the referee usually evens it up. He, he thought about giving him the blocker. That's what I thought. That's and, where I thought this was but going. But then when he just wrapped him up, Fisher doesn't retaliate. I mean, if you're going to give him a good one, give him a good one. Make darn sure he doesn't just skate away. Jacob Silverberg gets the honor and a one-time blast by Ellis knocked away by the stick of hands. Ellis, much like Sandy Botman, has got a really good shot. Yeah, he can really wire it, especially when he considers 5'10", 175. Jackman's penalty has expired. So now back to a five-on-four power play as Smith loses the handle for a moment, chips it down low, and stepping over to get a piece. Nice play by Botman. Jackman paddles it to the corner. Fans wanted a call on Colin Wilson. Rivero's the open man, top of the circle with two seconds left. His shot comes off the boards to the near side of the net. And the horn sounds as things get a little spicy down the stretch. But Anaheim has had a problem with penalties the last few games. And they're in the midst of their fourth penalty kill of this hockey game. They all came in the second period, and they trail 3-2. Rick Anderson just kind of eyeballing in the direction of the referee, but you know what? It, it's an undisciplined play. You, you can't retaliate like that. Uh, nine times out of ten, it is always the retaliation that's called by the officials, so a little bit of a discipline problem here from the Ducks has created an issue for them in this second period as the Predator power players look very, very good. Ducks trail 3-2 after two. They'll be shorthanded to begin the third. We're not shorthanded, however, as we go downstairs to Mark Rogandino. Anaheim Ducks Hockey is brought to you by Honda, official vehicle of the National Hockey League. Anaheim has four wins this season when trailing after two periods of play. And that's the task they face to begin the third period. Down three to two, Jacob Silverberg will sit. The Ducks hope for another minute 19 in the penalty box as he serves a penalty to goaltender Frederick Anderson. Kessler wins the draw to begin the period. Stoner able to get it all the way down. Seth Jones, who has one of the two Nashville power play goals tonight, reversing it and getting it back from Ryan Ellis. 
fresh iced for the Nashville extra man unit as Wilson's pass off the leg does not gain entry to the zone. Oh, good job, Kessler. That, that time got a little skate on that little chip. And defending the blue line, so important when you're killing these days. Rivero leads it in on the left side, drops it back, touched over by Ellis, and now the Preds are set up. Wilson looking for Smith in the far circle instead to the point for Jones who will walk it over near side. Ellis top of the left circle with a wrist shot that missed everything and that'll come around and out. You, you see the difficulty with when Ellis is handling the puck. I mean, I mean he's rarely shooting at the net. He's shooting for tips. They're shooting in the vicinity of the goal crease. As a goaltender it sometimes puts you back on your heels. You're so worried about that back door play actually being able to be executed that you, you get away from be doing if you're taking your eye off the puck. Oh, uh, Boschman broke his stick. Now he'll get one from a teammate, and without one is Nate Thompson. Penalty is over. Silverberg out of the box, and the Ducks full strength. So Nashville now two of four on the power play tonight. And I'm still down a goal. With a long way to go. 18 and a half to play third period. And it goes through Lindholm as it dug off the boards. Motion was still playing with Nate Thompson's stick. And his pass a little off the mark, but Perry able to collect it and into the Nashville zone. He drops it off for Getzloff. Perry ridden hard into the corner boards, and Fisher just hacks it out. Ooh, Ducks may have gotten the benefit of the doubt there, as Lovejoy was very close to being able to play that puck, but instead it goes by him, and icing is the call. I would say so. It looked like it bounced. Right over stick, Anaheim will take it. Offensive zone faceoff upcoming. It's been a while for the Ducks. I mean, four minor penalties in that second period. And you can understand why they have not tested Carter Hutton in some time. He's been cooled off sitting at the uh, opposite end. And they're putting 14 shots on goal in the first, Brian. They had only five in the second. Well, they spent the entire period, it seemed, trying to kill off a Nashville Predator power play. We're back to even strength. And now it's an opportunity for Boudreaux to get uh, a lot of people on the ice here who haven't played much so far in this game. What has been a real special teams type of an affair so far. Uh, he talked about it after the win against St. Louis here on Friday. He said it's so disruptive when you're killing penalties and all that special teams play. Well, all that special teams play in this one has been the penalty kill. Anaheim's had only one power play in the game so far. Maroon went careening into the corner. Steamrolled his man. Ducks get the puck. Lovejoy's bid is blocked by Gabriel Bourne. Koleski, who has a goal tonight for Anaheim, is going to draw a penalty on Eckholm. We've got the free arm wrapped around it. Extra man on for the Ducks. Anderson to the bench. Lovejoy handles up the boards for Kessler, and his return pass will vacate the zone. Lovejoy hustles back after it. Anaheim net is empty as Lovejoy leaves it for Fowler. Perry up the right side as it's stolen at the blue line by Gabriel Bork, and now the penalty call will go against Matias Eckholm. Going to be a holding penalty against Eckholm. There's Matt Bolesky, one hand on the stick, and he kind of uh, goes for what used to be an illegal play. The what defenseman would call that the pin, where you reach around with that stick and then just squeeze the attacking player up against the boards. That's the effect of essentially a one arm bear hug. Not allowed anymore. You know, that, that play right there, John, is a play I mean, defensemen were getting hurt and players are worried about head injuries. Brian Burke wanted to allow the bear hug. It was one of the things that he suggested might be a way of reducing the amount of uh, head injuries that players have been suffering. Second power play chance of the night for Anaheim. Back home, the fourth-year man out of Sweden sits in the Nashville penalty box. Botman. Plays it in and pursues it himself. Roman Yossi, native of Switzerland, reverses it, but Fowler is there and keeps it alive down low. Maroon hits the brakes, now gets it to Botman, who's all the way below the goal line. Around for Fowler and his pass misses Getzloff. Botman got a touch on it, and now Getzloff gets it from Palmieri. Fowler, left circle, thinks better of it. Drops it back to the captain. Getzloff will try the right side. Botman. Won't shoot. Tries to pass off the skate of Gostek. 
to Maroon behind the net, and again the point is open. Fowler across, Hotland winds, that's a shot right in front, Maroon can't elevate it over the left pad of Hutton. Gets it back, however, Fowler calling for it high slot, couldn't pull the trigger, but does hold the zone. Again, Maroon and a little back pass to Paul Mary. Great job to keep it alive. Open is Botman. Save Hutton. Comes across to get some penalty killers for Nashville. Got to be out of gas. 45 seconds as he dusts it off at the line. Down low for Maroon. In front for Paul Mary. Turned away. Fowler holds it in. Botman, side of the net. Oh, Maroon drew it across. Off the post on the tip by Maroon. Oh, and they blew the whistle. Why? I have no idea. Hutton is down in the crease. Goal, the referee lost sight of the puck. It was never covered. And Carter Hutton can thank his lucky stars. Yeah, a uh, great puck movement by the Ducks. They redirect off the post. Hutton never gets it covered, and he gets bailed out by the quick whistle of the referee. There was the first maroon chance. Here was the second one. Actually went off a skate off of the goal post. Puck is alive. The referee has already blown the whistle. There's the redirect boy. What a break for Hutton. And he wasn't even close to covering that puck. And there was a swing and a miss by Carter Hutton when he goes to cover it. Francis Sharon was in the far corner. And he was blocked out by Hutton. Jammed off the side of the net now by Kessler. 20 seconds left in the power play. And again, Anaheim holds the zone. Motion. Fumbles it at the line, and Fisher ices. Boy, a great-looking power play, but so far nothing to show for it. Long lead pass up the middle, and Kessler gains the line. His drop pass intercepted by Yarnbrook, who is spun around. And Perry comes up with it. Penalty is over. Ekholm out of the box, and the Preds full strength. Anaheim keeps the pressure on Lindholm with a drive. And again, parked in front this time, it's Kessler. Boschman holds the line for a moment. Volchenkov slides it over. Seth Jones brings it back into his own zone. Now Volchenkov just blindly behind his back, and Jones comes to the rescue, but has to just play it up the boards. Volchenkov, give him an ax. I mean, he's out there, seriously. He's not even trying to stick handle. He's just swinging that <laughs> stick around. Offside is the call. And Volchenkov checks like his thumb may have been caught on the bad end of a slash there. Twelfth year man out of Russia takes a seat. Anton Balchenkov, now this third team, originally a first round pick of the Ottawa Senators back in 2000. First season as a Nashville Predator. He's puck right on the Predator net. So Hutton shovels it away himself. It goes wide of the Anaheim goal, so that's icing on the Nashville netminder. Not something you see every day. Yeah. And you say, my bad. When you get a one goal lead, you don't want to take a purely defensive zone face off. The Ducks get fresh troops over. They get the Kessler line back on. We see Kessler they pull back to Bolesky how many times in this situation this season? Hutton's last outing. It was 12 days ago at Boston in a 5-3 loss to the Bruins in what was Nashville's final action prior to the Christmas holiday. So far tonight, he has made 23 saves. Molesky takes it in behind him in the Nashville net. Only to have it dislodged, and Philip Forsberg, the 20-year-old, leads it ahead. Ekholm joins the rush. And throws it wide of the Anaheim goal. It comes up the boards and waiting for it is Paul Mary. Cross ice pass to Stoner who joined the rush, but a little indecision on what to do with it. And Paul Mary is ahead of the play. That's offside. You can check it. It's in the rule book. He scores! As a man, a Bolesky scores!
Sunday game summary, Matt Bolesky got the scoring started with the only goal of the opening period. Mike Ribeiro has been in on all three Nashville goals, and it's been the Predator power play that's been the difference so far in a 3-2 Nashville lead. Yeah, well, that to me is, is the story of this game. The Ducks, a great opening period, but then a couple of calls go against them and uh, add to it some bad and disciplined penalties. And uh, that's where we're at. A couple of power play goals. The Predators have looked uh, very comfortable in the power play in tonight's game. Anaheim out shooting the Preds 6 0 in this third period, including a good power play opportunity that came up empty. Icing the call here against the Ducks. 13 26 to go. In a one goal game, the Ducks have certainly been here before, to say the least. No personnel changes for Bruce Boudreaux's club off the icing call. And the faceoff comes back to the right of Frederick Anderson. Ricard Raquel with a faceoff win. Lovejoy up the glass. Silverberg couldn't chop it out. Smith gets it to the net. Good save by Anderson through traffic. Craig Smith has one of the three Nashville goals tonight. And Lovejoy steams to center, dumps it in. Well, it looked like it hit that curled glass on the end of the Nashville bench as it just shot right to the middle of the ice. Philip Forsberg with a drive off the wing that misses everything and comes around and back out to neutral ice. Ribeiro. Receives on left wing, pulls up, and then just feathers it to the corner. Lindholm reverses for Corey Perry. He returns the favor, and there's a lots of space up the left side for Lindholm. Rick wide motion just taps it for Perry. And Perry got clipped at the blue line, and a penalty coming up to the Preds here as Gostad touches up. Well, Corey Perry had a whole pile of speed going through the neutral zone. And the Predators were trying to defend the blue line. Nystrom was there. Ole Jokinen was there. The, the chop by Jokinen that got called, but it was actually the glove in the face that did the damage. And that was Nystrom that did that. So Jokinen sits now. Have seen two power play goals scored by the Predators, and they need one here desperately. It's their third power play chance of the night. It begins with Getzloff taking the draw against Gostad. Getzloff broke his stick. Botnan drives up the left boards, trying to just keep it in the zone, and as he plays it back to the point, nobody there to cover. Perry will hinge it back to Getzloff. He's got a new stick. That's some very inopportune broken sticks in this game tonight for the Ducks. Area pass off the corner of boards. Perry got to it, but he misses Maroon as he throws it across. Botnan to the middle of the ice for Fowler. Gets off into the middle. Maroon shot is blocked. And it's underneath a fallen Nashville player and then gloved back to the netminder, Hutton, who covers up. Remember we showed in between periods that both Nashville goals on the power play have come from the middle of the ice from shots. The Ducks don't want to seem to shoot it from the middle of the ice. They seem to want to, seem to, want to keep moving it down onto the angle, which from a, I tell you from the goaltender's perspective, I would much rather have the puck on the side of the rink than I would directly in front of the net. It essentially eliminates options when it's moved off the side of the building. Only 35 seconds gone in the penalty to Ole Jokinen for slashing. Getzloff steps in to take the draw against Mike Fisher. And Roman Yossi who blocked that maroon shot moments ago. Anaheim controls the draw. Botman hands it off, gets it back middle of the ice. Near circle is Fowler. And Fowler right back for Sammy Botman. Watched out high. Left circle gets locked. Side of the net, Perry. All the way through. Fowler's backhand or block. Dug out of the corner and whipped the length of the ice by Seth Jones. Yeah, really well played by Nashville. And it's uh, some good communication between Volchenkov and Jones. Three-foot pass in the exit. Botman crossed everybody up, including Kessler with that pass. So Yossi hammers it off the boards in front of his own bench and back out. 40 seconds to the man advantage. Paul Mary trying to release on the puck. Nystrom got a good pump on him at the blue line. And 
and that enables Yossi to ice it. And he was about a foot away from putting that puck over the glass. And that was close and the clear by Yossi. Closer again to Paul Mary. This time he gets it deep and Kessler storms in after him. Yossi goes down in the corner on top of the puck. Back to the point, Boschman slides it over wide open, one hole pass went right through Molesky. Paul Mary trying to get it back to Kessler. Can't jump around Weber. Dug out by Molesky. And Kessler gets it back to the line. Boschman puts his head down, lets it go, and Hutton makes the save and reels in the rebound. Yeah, good job by Yossi that time, who blocked out in front. Allowed the goaltender Carter Hutton the opportunity to get a clean lane. Look at, look at the job in front of the net by Yossi. Kyle Palmer is trying to get there. Cannot. Well defended that time. Penalty is over to Ole Jokinen, a 17 year veteran, released from the Nashville penalty box. And just about halfway through this third period now. For a second. For a moment, there was still one second up on the scoreboard, so can't blame the Predators if they're a little confused from a personnel standpoint. Well, this is what Bruce Boudreaux wants a clarification on. And, uh, Dan O'Halloran, you know, I, I really like it when the referees, when they're asked to come over to the bench and speak to the coach, go to the bench, speak to the coach, let them know what the ruling is. Sometimes players and coaches, these are part of the frustration is when the referees won't talk to them. I don't know what's going on. Clean face-off lane for Raquel, but he has a poke off his stick by Rivera. He then waits to enter the zone because he knew he had drawn Forsberg offside. Smith in on the four check for the Predators. And the Ducks have to bring it to the near side to vacate the zone. Lovejoy steps up at center. Silverberg. Trying to get it deep, knocked away from Forsberg, and back it comes into Anaheim Ice, where Fowler plays it. Lovejoy, nice pass into the middle, Cogliano ahead to Silverberg, who return pass just out of his reach. Ellis holds him at bay in front, Silverberg missed! And Hutton covers up. Well, Silverberg did not get a lot on that shot, but a uh, quick little pass. And Silverberg's just gonna chop a short backhander here, and. Hutton able to find it with the left hand. All rights to this broadcast are reserved in any rebroadcast, recording, retransmission, telecommunication to the public, or other unauthorized use of this broadcast without the express written permission of the Anaheim Ducks is prohibited. 9.40 to go at Honda Center, 3-2. The Nashville Predators have the lead. Forgive us if we feel like we've seen this movie before. And the Ducks have been very, very good in one goal games this season. 19-0 and 6. And they're comfortable playing in, in games like this. That should have been called offside. That actually was put back in by Botman and hit Brian Getzloff in the leg. Big rebound for Gostad and able to slide over and make the stop is Anderson, who has not been very busy in this third. Just the third shot on goal he has seen this period. A thus far scoreless third, 3-2 Nashville. Middle of the ice, Perry. His shot blocked, rebound picked up by Fork, and it squirts to the near side. As the Predators just keep getting in front of everything. Good little pass again into the middle of the ice. Creates a good opportunity off of the rush. And it's been one and out, though. I mean, they, the Ducks have not been able to get to too many rebounds in front of Carter Hutton. So they do a lot of credit to the Predators for that. Anderson with a fluttering puck that he puts around the dasher. Lindholm reaching it, still laying along the base of the dasher. Ellis all the way to the top of the circle to keep it in. Kessler inadvertently put it in front of his own goal. Ampus Lindholm uses the dasher to bring it around and get on his horse to get there, Francois Beauchamp. Gabriel Bork took a little run at Beauchamp, and he got the worst one. Lindholm has it knocked off his stick, but it came right to Paul Mary, who clears the zone at home, lobs it back in. Well, this is just aggressive defense here from the Predators. Rolls off the stick of Boschman. Boy, that wreaked some havoc as it went right to Colin Wilson. Long stretch pass to Paul Mary. Tries to cut to the middle, denied by Volchenko. 
Predators as far as the Anaheim line get on side. Colin Wilson sends it in. Anderson sets it up and then has to get out of the way for Cam Fowler. Raquel finds some space, makes a move at center into the Nashville zone, hands it off Maroon off the wing and a quick save by Hutton with the left hand. Raquel digs it away from Maroon from behind the net. Not to one knee as Yossi got inside, oh, excuse me, so Barrow got inside position on it. Seth Jones picks up the loose chain. And you see again Nashville in a very smart game. Got all kinds of people down low in the defensive zone. And plenty of support. You know, take the body, grab the puck, the support person comes right in. And no messing around. I mean, they're not even trying to make passes here. It's just a chip off the boards and an exit from the defensive zone. Stay with us immediately following the conclusion of this one tonight at Honda Center. It's Ducks Live, brought to you by Mazda. Teams separated by three points in the Western Conference standings. A pair of division leaders here tonight. Ducks first in the West, Nashville second in the West. And there again, Volchenko off the glass. Here's Getzloff. Pulls it into his feet. Brings it to the front of the net. Hutton makes the save. Spinning rebound bid by Bork, turned away by Hutton. Hotman at the point is open. And his bid blocked out of the zone by Wilson. Nashville trying to change quickly and storming back in is Sammy Botman. Brings it to the middle. As he got to the top of the blue paint, and the net is off behind Hutton. What well, a great rush by Sammy Botton. He pulls it to the backhand and forces Hutton to make a pretty good stop. Prior to that, Ryan Getzloff, watch the feet right here. Tucked into the feet, still manages to kick it up to his stick. And he was trying to get that puck up into the air, but uh, some pretty good work there by Carter Hutton. Botton goes inside. Yoshi jumps right on top of him inside the goal crease. His speed of Ottman on the attack. Boy, he is dangerous. Took his time getting up, and he is slow to get back to the Anaheim bench. You know, his, his legs kind of splayed out to the side there as he was going down to the ice. And, uh, he is heading right into the locker room. I didn't think Sammy looked very comfortable as he was getting up. He collided with the near side post as well. He goes to the Anaheim locker room and play goes on. 6.25 left. 3-2 Nashville. Bushman angles it in off the stanchion and it's cleared back by the Predators the hard way, but it won't go far enough for icing. So Fowler forced to settle it as he's back in behind his own goal. Ahead for Nate Thompson, who shovels it off the boards and in. Thompson slides it across. Boschma off on the play. Can't get a stick on it. Silverberg covering the point. Can't keep it in. Fowler hinges over and is able to get to it. Serves it around the near side wall. Silverberg and Gabriel Bork there. 5.45 to go in the game at Honda Center. 3-2 Nashville, as it has been since the second period. Boschman from behind the net, now ahead for Nate Thompson. Off the boards, he's able to clear the zone, but on the back check, Arcabello lays it off. And Weber will drift all the way behind his own net with it. Let's go Ducks, the champ from over 16,000 at Honda Center here tonight. And Weber takes his time. That comes pass, goes right in on the Anaheim goal. Anderson had trouble with it, Stoner has to play on. Valeski flips it into the middle. Here's Kessler, uses his glove to settle it. Drops it off, Palmieri lets it go. That's blocked. That's a piece out of Olchenkov. He stays out there. Lovejoy keeps it in. Palmieri down low with Kessler. Trying to bring it in front, his stick was slashed. Stoner steps up. Kessler in front, it skips across the crease. Stoner all the way to the corner after it. Held in by the point coverage of Kessler. Behind the net, Paul Mary falling down, trying to get it to Lovejoy as he activates. Finally, the puck dug out of the corner, and Wilson will lob it back. Sammy Botman back on the airline bench as Lovejoy wires it around and in. Now it's the turn for the Ducks defense to activate and to pinch down every single shift. Boy, Volchenkov needs a whistle. 
He's got nothing. Chances in this third period are 9 nothing in favor of the Ducks. They're trying to keep the pressure on. Turnover in the neutral zone. Reaching back to get it is Getzloff. And he flips it in on the backhand. Boschner way up on the play. Bumping with Yossi. In behind the net. Bork can't get to it. And Shea Weber clears. Nystrom gets it ahead for Jokinen. Back for Nystrom, and that's knocked away, but in the high slot, kept alive by the Preds as Weber was in deep on the play. Lindholm trying to get the legs moving. Ahead to Getzloff. He puts it into the shin guard of Jokin, and it comes right back to him. Now he'll roll it in, and Hutton is out to smother with just 3.27 left. As the Predators holding on for dear life here at Honda Center. Up 3-2. The Predators have a one-goal lead late in the third. What's at stake here tonight at Honda Center? We'll take a look at the Western Conference standings. The two division leaders are on the ice here tonight. Separated by only three points. Nashville has played three less games, however. And we'll take a look at the wild card starting to heat up as Calgary and San Jose are tied for that final spot. This is the halfway mark of the 14-15 season for the Anaheim Ducks here tonight. Ricard Raquel steps in against Mike Fisher and uh, Fisher has had a tough go of it in the defensive zone. He loses this one again. Two and seven. The last nine draws in the defensive zone in this game. But he digs the puck away from Maroon. Behind the net, Maroon sweeps it right back through the slot. It comes to Fowler. His shot hit Raquel. Cogliano was spelled as he went after it in front. Maroon again for Cogliano. Can't get a stick on it. And Pat Maroon showing off that passing ability from below the goal line, but unable to connect. He's had a very good game tonight, Pat Maroon. He's been a force, especially on the Ducks' power play. He hit a post earlier in the game, and he's got it right now, the St. Louis native. In the Nashville zone, on his own, with the mates changing behind the play, however. And Fisher sneaks up the near wall and gets it into the Anaheim zone. Back to get it, Hampus Lindholm. Played over 23 minutes Friday against St. Louis. He feeds it to Paul Mary. And jumping into the play was Boschman, but he couldn't connect with it. Down low, Aleski has it as skates, gets it to Boschman. He put it right through the slot again. All the way out to Lindholm. Thompson's shot. Redirected, bounces off the side of it, and they score! Boschman got to it! It came off the side of the net right to him. Just 217 remaining. They've done it all year. Defense activated. Boschman is down in front of it. Uh, Nate Thompson hammers this one. It's wide. Boschman gets the tip. And then the whack. And is that going off at Bolesky? And Bolesky is right there on the doorstep. Let's see. Watch Boschman. He's going to. Nope. I don't think Bolesky ever touches it. I think he just chops it. It may have gone in off the goaltender himself, off of the back of the shaft of the stick of Hutton. What a huge goal. Frank was in his office. <laughs> he was below the goal line. That reminds me a lot of the Keith Carney play in overtime against the Red Wings in the playoffs in 0-2. The Ducks have done it again. We're tied at three. And now Nashville has to try to turn it on offensively. Let's see if they can. They haven't generated much in this period. Icing will be the call here against Anaheim with just 156 to play. Yeah, look at a great look. Using Foxwell. Watch this chop of the puck. It's off the inside of the goal stick. And then watch this off the shaft of the goal stick as Hutton tries to find it. He actually bumps it in himself over the back of the line. Great look, guys. Uh, that is a terrific look as Boschman will be credited with a goal. His second of the season. And Valeski draws the lone assist. Now Fisher with a shot that's blocked by Botman who's back out there. That's good to see. And the puck comes out center ice. Maroon will change as he was pursuing it momentarily. Roman Yossi's pass will roll to the right corner of the Anaheim zone. Victor Stahlberg tries to center. Went behind the net. Tapped along by Lovejoy. Kessler trying to protect it up the wall. Yossi pinches all the way to the corner. Kessler gets it ahead. And Nate Thompson 
jabbing at it. Thompson should get an assist on the goal as well. I don't know why he didn't. He was the one who offered the shot from the blue line. And it doesn't matter right now. Let's go Ducks the champ. 16,000 have stayed. Scoring chance at the third period, John. 11 nothing in favor of Anaheim. So one minute left in regulation. The Ducks have outshot Nashville 13-3 here in the third, and here they come again. Tonight at the blue line, however, they regroup, and Lovejoy puts it on the glass and in. Hutton wisely stays put. Perry to the corner. Along for Getzloff. Open at the line, Dosen. Holds it in. Down low for Maroon. Knocked away. He rolls it to the slot. Nobody home, and Jokinen clears. In home, waiting for everyone to get onside. Dosen fires it in on net. Stick save Hutton. Gets off, has it on the far wall, trying to get it to the net. That's blocked. Kostad has him all locked up. He pulls it below the goal line, and Ekholm steps into Perry. Maroon gets it to Perry. Brings it in front, loses an edge, and it's slotted away as it gets to the blue paint. Maroon battling for it. Five seconds left in the period. I think he's a little out of gas as he tries to dig it free. And that's how regulation will come to a close. You know, a valiant effort. The Ducks get the puck down low. Francois Boshin lobbying for a penalty. The referee not going to do anything at this point. Another great comeback for the Ducks. So it's bonus hockey again. Anaheim will go to overtime for the 15th time this year as Boshima scores with just over two to play. Well, our Land Rover player of the game is the reason we are about to go to overtime at Honda Center tonight. Francois Boschma was playing below the goal line. He got a tip on a shot by Nate Thompson, and then he went to the net and got his rebound. And with 2.17 to play in the game, he changed everything with his second goal of the season. And the Ducks just kind of powered their way and pulled their way to the front of the net. And it was Boschman, Bolesky was on the doorstep, Palmieri was in the vicinity. Francois Bosch, I, I gotta believe the defenseman just absolutely love. You don't want to be behind in the game, but when you get the green light to go right down, first of all, remember at the beginning of that shift, he was in on the four check, and he just absolutely hammered one of the National Predators defensemen, and, and you know that defensemen love to do that. <laughs> it's better to give than receive. Absolutely. The holidays may be behind us. Well, Francois Boschma has given the Ducks at least a point here tonight. And now, what is that question? Is who will get the second point? The Predators' two consecutive games have coughed up leads late to go to overtime. Yesterday, they won just 18 seconds into the extra session, thanks to Roman Yossi. They are 3-1, and one, Nashville, and games decided in the five-minute four-on-four. The Ducks are 4-2. and two. Here we go. Kessler to oppose Fisher. We're underway in overtime. Weber and Yossi defensively to start for Peter Laviolette's Predators. And Yossi will put it up on around the glass and in. Now anytime you, know, you can force a team in, in the overtime session to dump the puck in like that, usually an indication that they are a little bit on the tired side. Cut out to play it behind the net and nearly chopping it away from him was Paul Mary. Weber up on the play. It has passed in have a lot on it, but it does connect. Here's Forsberg on the backhand and a save by Anderson. No problem for Freddie Anderson there as Forsberg, who's been quiet in this game tonight. Forced to the backhands, forced to a severe angle. And Anderson just builds that wall up and swallows up the rebound. The goalies look up like that. They're looking at the overhead scoreboard in the building, kind of checking their positioning. You know the replay is coming. That's one of the luxuries of being a pro goaltender. You get to watch your handy work at every stoppage in play. Face off to the right of Anderson. And gets him off controls that Fowler wanted to head off to the racing, but he was picked up immediately by Forsberg. And now gets off. Ahead for Perry with speed into the Nashville zone. Eckholm chops it away from him. Boy, Matias Eckholm's pretty good with that stick, isn't he? Fisher trying to split the D. Tip to the corner as Fowler stepped into him, but he has no angle as he goes and gets it. Eckholm up the boards. 
Brings it in front, tries to backhand it. Anderson made the save, gave up a little rebound. Fisher battles for that. Predators get it back. Seth Jones into the middle, just wide. And off the glass, it's taken by Lovejoy. Nashville changing. Bucks want to do the same. Lovejoy wants to circle back. Ribeiro with an old lay on it. And now an errant pass intended for Thompson will be taken by Fowler. Now Ribeiro with a little more urgency on the forecheck there. Lovejoy plays it over. Nice presence by Thompson to hang on to the puck. And now ahead to Fowler. Cam Fowler angles it in. Thompson reaching. Yossi bumping with him in the corner. Nate Thompson trying to keep possession, and Forsberg drags it along. Thompson gets it back, wide open, Clayton Stoner lets it go, that's blocked. That took a bite out of Ryan Ellis. Ryan Ellis, boy, he's been good tonight in this game. Uh, Clayton Stoner hammers it, and then a courageous play by Ellis, who was kind of in that danger zone about 15 feet away when he launches the shot. Just over two minutes gone in overtime. Now the Predators regroup, Ellis. Gets center red, angles it in off a of stanchion. Picked up by Lindholm, who thinks better of trying to force the issue. Now he'll skate it up the left side. Into the Nashville zone, and it was slashed off his stick by Yard Croak at the moment of truth, and that drew Cogliano offside. A very close play at the offensive blue line. Here's the play with Clayton Stoner hammering it. The Ducks have got a great screen set up, and you know what? If that puck doesn't get blocked by Ellis, that was all kinds of trouble for the goaltender because uh, Boyd Bolesky had the perfect screen established in front of Carter Hutton. Just about halfway through the extra session. Kessler out to oppose Yarncroke, who wins the draw. Weber and Yossi defensively for the Predators. I beg your pardon, that's Eckholm. And his pass all the way to the blue line. Taken by Craig Smith, pulls to the backhand, and a good save by Anderson. Paul Mary not to his knees, just flips it out of the zone. Boschman didn't see it, so he'll retreat defensively. And Weber has it. Shea Weber now in his ninth season, a Sycamus, British Columbia, ahead now for Craig Smith. Smith trying to just chip it along, broken up by Lindholm, and he chips it ahead. Here comes Kessler on his off wing. Cuts to the middle, drop pass, got it over to Boschman, couldn't kick it up to his stick. Francois stays with it and he nudges it up the wall. Lindholm gets to it. Throws it to the net. Oh, Hutton kept it out as it went off of Paul Mary. I don't think he ever saw that one either. Paul Mary gets it back out of the corner. Can't bring it to the slot. Without a helmet is yard broke. And he's got it at center ice. Off the bench jumps Seth Jones. Wants to cut to the middle. Jones drops it back for Yossi. He's fresh off the bench. Nowhere to go with the pass as Fowler stays in the lane. Again for yard broke. It looks like Guy Lafleur out there right now. <laughs> He'll go to the bench. That's old-time hockey there. Yossi drifts to the far wall for the hash mark. Forced back, and now we get a penalty. Or no, excuse me, the net is off behind Anderson as there was a collision. Yeah, and they're going to call this incidental contact on the part of the Predators. No penalty, but the faceoff will come outside the blue line. There was that play where it's just thrown towards the net. And you can see it sits right in the feet of Kyle Palmieri, and I, I think Carter Hutton gets a little touch on that puck. Here's what happened with the net going off. Freddie Anderson wisely kind of leans back into that goal post and knocks it off his moorings. Allie Yarncroke still hasn't put his helmet back on. Yarncroke, 23 years of age, 5'11", 156. Oh, Very possibly the lightest player in the National Hockey League. I like how the, the light guys add that extra pound. Like if, <laughs> if you're a heavy guy, it's two, you weigh 250 or you weigh 220. Light guy, 156. They told him 155, and he said, come on, give me one more at least. <laughs> An interesting note on the Predators here. They've gotten five goals this weekend from their defensemen. They don't have one from Shea Weber. And Weber has only one shot on goal tonight. So the Ducks have kind of taken that big blast from Weber out of the play so far. They also a pretty good indication of why this Nashville team has been so good this season. 40 seconds left in overtime. 
Forsberg on his off wing. Takes the shot and it's absorbed by Anderson. That was a new NHL. You got a mobile defense. They're up on the play. They're the fourth man in on the attack. And that's the story of Nashville. Has been in tonight's game. Forsberg just kind of pulls it into his wheelhouse and rips it. He's outside the faceoff dot. No problem for the goaltender, Freddie Anderson, on that one. Tied at three in overtime. Another 37.6 seconds left. And if that doesn't decide anything, we'll go to a shootout. Kessler wins the draw to the corner. Getzloff doesn't handle it cleanly around the near side. Steps into Roman Yossi, who protects the puck. Poked away by the captain. Back out center ice. Yossi has to retreat. Forsberg joins him and tries to rev it up through center. Kessler got a good slash on him, and the loose puck picked up by Hampus Lindholm. Lindholm flushed from behind the net. Getzloff up the boards, tried to get it to Lindholm, didn't put enough on it. Weber turns back. Five seconds in overtime. His wrist shot is handled by Anderson, who sweeps it away. But Ribeiro got to it, tries to center, and a shot will be blocked as the horn sounds. And 65 minutes is not enough. We'll have bonus, bonus hockey. It's a shootout tonight in Honda Center. A fun hockey game tonight in Nashville, as advertised. They've got great speed. Uh, the moments where the Ducks were able to get the puck down deep and cycle, you could see that that was where Nashville looked most vulnerable. A fun game in that it really was a, a contrast of styles. And uh, surprising that when all is said and done, it, it's the two power play goals for the Predators. The reason why they're going to get a point out of this game. The Ducks dominate the third period until the overtime, in which Nashville had the puck and seen the entire five minute overtime period. And there's been a lot of ebbs and flows. The Ducks were the better team in the first. Nashville carried the play in the second. As Brian mentioned, the third period was all Anaheim as they were storming the castle looking for the equalizer. You see the numbers in the shootouts. Home team has the choice whether to shoot first or not. There's a lot of schools of thought. And we're getting word from down at ice level that Anaheim is going to defer and let the Predators shoot first. Roman Yossi will be the opening shooter for the Predators. So there's your theme, Brian. The defensemen have been doing a lot of scoring, so lead with the defensemen in the shootout. He holds it, holds it, holds it, and Anderson stays with it. Great patience by Freddie Anderson. Yossi throws a bunch of fakes at him, and Freddie just stays with him. And there's that big push off the left skate and the extension of the right arm. See how he sticks the right arm out in front of his body? That improves the goaltender's chances of taking away as much net as possible. They're on their feet at Honda Center. They love Corey Perry. He had a goal in the game tonight. And he'll sweep way in, as is his trademark, from off the right side. Hutton way out. He can't sneak it through the five hole. Oh, well played by Hutton. And Corey Perry comes in from that angle, and he's got two things on his mind. Am I going five hole, or am I going top shelf glove? He threw a fake. Hutton didn't bite. And I think he just missed a shot. I think there was space there. He just couldn't slide it home. Another defenseman, Ryan Ellis, comes over the boards for Peter Laviolette. A right-hand shot. And he'll pick it up and swing in off the left side. Anderson out. Now he slows down. Speeds back up and a diving glove save by Anderson. I think this is the toughest play. When a guy slows down and he's barely moving and then he's got fast hands like that, you can see that Ellis has the goaltender beaten on the move, but he can't elevate it. What a great athletic save by Freddie Anderson. Anaheim's ace in the shootout hole is Jacob Silverberg. 63% on the year. A right-hand shot. He approaches Hutton. release and uh, Hutton guesses you know what he kicks out the left leg it's too much that puck actually goes off the inside of his left leg he was guessing and I guess you'd say he over guessed on that one so Craig Smith has to score and the Ducks win this shootout and the right hand shot approaches Anderson now he hits the brakes and scores I don't know why more guys don't do it this way quite honestly when you're almost stopped, just creeping forward, and you can move the puck side to side like this, 
I mean, the waiting game, I think, swings in favor of the attacking forward. Ryan Kessler, two for seven this season, has the game on his stick, literally. He was shot, low stick, with off the ice. He'll swing in from the left on Hutton. Ducks win! Secure another two points. They trailed with two and a half minutes left in regulation. They win it thanks to Ryan Kessler in the shootout. Our final score tonight at Honda Center. The Ducks four and the Nashville Predators three. Stay with us. Much more to come as Ducks Live is next.